Hello again, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. Haven't done one of these for a while, so I thought I'd make another one. Uh, it's a Ford S Max 2 liter TDCI. Uh, it's got a DPF issues, and it's the usual story. It's been to garages, they've done one, two, three, four regens. Um, the regens don't finish, it gets to sort of 50% and gives up. Um, so he's come down to see me um, and hopefully I can get it sorted out. Pretty sure it's going to be very much the usual story what I always see. So I, I do carry a lot of parts for these in, in the van. Um, so we'll get inside, have a look at the diagnostics and see what we're going to be looking at. So I've just parked it up here next to my ramps. Obviously I've just finished the DPF cleaning on the Honda. Should be on one of my last videos and we'll get started on this one. Okay, so inside you can see it says engine malfunction, uh, that's okay, Let's see if anything else comes up, no. Engine management light is on there. Got the Launch UK Eurotab 3, we'll set up a scan of the vehicle. Uh, high speed scan. While that's going through, what I will say is what I'm doing here, look at the minute, is I've got my phone charging on this. Using the camera on it, it does kill the battery a lot, so using this as a mobile battery bank. Um, it is a jump starter engine, jump starters from Oxito, and I will put the link to this as well in the description if you want to look at it. it you can use it as a torch, see there, you probably can't see it because we're in daylight, but you can use it to jump start your car and also to charge your phone. Now back to this, Let's see what phone codes we have, we're done on the scan. Missing communication, we're going to ignore that one. Could be a flat battery at some point. Yeah, we're gonna, I'm just going to ignore all the rolls for a minute. HVAC, yeah, we're not really worried about that. BCM, cruise control switch. Diesel particulate filter, this is what we're here to look at. Bank 1, diesel particulate filter, soot accumulation. So we've got all of these codes here. I'll give you a second to read them. And vehicle conditions incorrect, exhaust temperature too low. These are going to be the main two reasons why we've got a blockage of the DPF. Exhaust temperature too low is probably going to be because the vaporizer is blocked up so it's not heating the, the DPF up to the correct temperature to do a region. That would be sort of 620 degrees ish, and then it's going to trigger a fault. In conditions are incorrect. So that means the DPF regeneration is now inhibited and the vehicle is not going to try and do its own region anymore. Let's go into the live data, have a look at that. Data stream, look at soot. And differential, oh, didn't clear the soot, D, I, F, F. Differential pressure of the DPF. Press OK. What have we got? 30 millibars of pressure. Um, so this only goes up in 10 increments, so let's just increase it by sort of 100 RPM and see if that goes to 40. It actually dropped a little bit there, didn't it? Yeah. So we've got just over 30 millibars of pressure at idle. Let's hold it up to sort of 3000 RPM. Around 200. Okay, so we've got the vehicle up on the ramp. We're going to get underneath and have a look. Okay, I'm under the vehicle. Here is the exhaust. We've got the DPF up there. There's the vaporizer. So we're going to get this little cross member brace off here. Couple of bolts on each side. Right now we've got all the four bolts off. We can just take that little panel away, which will give us a better view of the vaporizer up there. Okay, what I'm doing now is getting some heat on this because that's going to be seized on.
Okay, now we use a 22 mil spanner to open that. We can now pull that out. And then of course disconnect the fuel line and the power supply there. So now if we have a look at this vaporizer here, you can see where the port there is blocked up with soot. Okay, now just for ed educational purposes, if we connect up a pressure gauge to the vaporizer there, we can see there it's holding pressure. Now if we do that test on a brand new part, what happens is you don't get any pressure. Okay, now we're just going to get this new part and fit it in there. You will have a little notch, so if you move it up and down, it should sort of find its way and then fall into place, basically. There'll be a little notch. So you can see you can twist it up and down, but there is a little notch right there that should align it so the valve basically is spraying downwards. Okay, now I'm using a mixture of this Launch UK DPF cleaning fluid in our gun here. Now sometimes you'd get the odd person saying, oh, it doesn't need DPF cleaning, just do a force regen. Um, don't do a force regen if you've got a, a block DPF that's gone past its point of self-regeneration. You're either going to melt the DPF, crack it, or possibly set fire to your car. A much safer way to do it, get your little compressor and one of these kits hooked up, or just get someone who can do it properly for you. Um, we'll clear out the DPF. This will flush it out at less than 100 degrees, so there's no chance of damaging the DPF. Then we can reset the faults and all should be good. Okay, so here's where I am so far. Disconnect the pressure holes from the DPF here, and then connect up my own little holes here. That's connected to the gun. This one right here. Now that's connected to the compressor at 130 psi. So now we just pull the trigger, get the fluid pushed in there, Now these cars, the DPF sits right down here in the middle, so we can just fill it right up with the fluid, with the engine off. Okay, we're back in the vehicle. Uh, let's start it up. Hold the revs up around 3000 for somewhere between two to five minutes. And then we should start seeing the pressure of the DPF there come down. Try and get on the graph. that little graph there reduce as the pressure comes down see that's holding the res there at 3000 rpm Now again, on these, because it only goes up in 10 increments, you'll see a zero reading. It's a very rare car, because it doesn't give you anything until you sort of reach 10. So if we give it a little bit of acceleration here, you'll see 10 millibars. Give it a few revs. You'll see sort of like a white vapor coming out like that. Okay, so that's the physical side of it done. What we need to do now is use this diagnostic machine to come in here and reset a lot of the, these things. So reset the particle filter learn values. Then you can also vaporize, uh, prime up the vaporizer. I don't think this is 100% necessary because I've seen it work without even doing this bit but you do have to reset the particle filter values and you only do that reset of the DPF once the pressure has come down you've got rid of the soot 
Now once you do this, it's also a good way to diagnose and tell if the actual vaporizer fuel pump is working. So you should hear like a, a ticking noise. Now we're just going to clear all of the fault codes. So just use a pedal depressor now to hold the revs, let the rest of that vapor clear away. So that's it, this car now is all finished. I'll see you on the next video.